What is going on at YouTube? Now this video might ruffle some feathers. It is titled something along the lines of the dark side of experimentals or the bad side of owning experimentals. I don't know what I'm gonna title it yet, but it's about this velocity behind me, which is an experimental and why for an AMP mechanic working on an experimental or really for anyone working on an experimental can be frustrating. So stick around. Now I'm going to put on a hat because my hair is a mess, but I'm going to walk you around the airplane and I will take my ugly mug out of shot because the airplane is much more beautiful than I am. Now this is one of my client's aircraft. He flies the airplane quite a lot and it is a Velocity XL. So it's quite large. It has a IO550 Continental on the back of it. He recently had it taken to the Velocity factory. They repainted it. Well, the Velocity factory didn't repaint it, but it was repainted at the time. They installed a beautiful glass panel, which I will get booted up here in just a second. They installed vertical power um, and basically modified it quite heavily to be a very fast and very beautiful Velocity and or canard airplane. Now, here's where the bad side about working on experimental airplanes comes in. This airplane is experimental. And we recently, and by recently, I mean just a few days ago, experienced a landing gear failure. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the lens of my camera. And when I come back, all of this will be booted up. Now I have everything turned on for the memes. And if you look right here, you'll notice there is a gear down enunciator. But if you look at the landing gear control panel, none of the landing gear lights are on and I should have three greens right now. Now I'm not gonna do it, but if I put the gear handle up, nothing is gonna happen because it has an airspeed safety switch where the airspeed has to read 80 knots and more on that in just a second. Um, but basically none of this is working. The test button doesn't work. None of this works. And I'll explain why in a second. I'll explain why it was frustrating. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. There we go. So. This is frustrating because it is experimental and because it has been modified, it doesn't have really a traditional maintenance manual or something that you would follow. And it's unlike any other velocity or really any other airplane that I'm traditionally work on because it has a landing gear controller in here. And here's the vertical power that I was talking about a second ago. But because of that, you have to end up following the wiring diagrams and I'll, I'll flip to the one that I'm using you end up having to follow the wiring diagrams, which this is the wiring diagram for the landing gear controller. And it has things like this reset force down or this ground gear up enable switch. But the problem is this wiring diagram doesn't tell me where this ground gear up enable switch is. And I'm gonna spoil it for you. It's not in there. They did not wire this in because they use a balloon through the pedostatic system to trick it to think it's over 80 knots to put the gear up. I don't have a balloon to do that. so. That in and, of, in and of itself is gonna be a kind of a pain in the butt putting the gear up on this airplane. But anyways, through some troubleshooting, I figured out that the diodes had burned out or one of them burned out on the gear solenoid and ended up frying the gear controller, which brings me to my point. If this was say a Cessna, a Cessna, I don't know, what's something that's retractable, a 210 or a Piper Cherokee Aero slash Piper Saratoga, they're all the same. The landing gears are the same, the pumps are the same, and I mean, model to model, they're the same, not Cessna and Piper are the same, but they're all the same. If I've worked on one Piper, you've kind of worked on them all. If you've worked on one Cessna, you've kind of worked on them all. But that's not the case with these airplanes. With experimentals, they were built by some chaps in a garage somewhere. Now this one was built by God only knows who, but that means that they may have taken some creative liberty in how they built the aircraft and deviated from the drawings in certain things. So part of working on the airplane is a hunt to find the pieces, the parts, and the components you are looking for, and it can be quite difficult to track them down. Now, fortunately, when this thing went to the Velocity factory and was rewired and had the glass panel done, they did a really good job of labeling things, but there is still quite a lot of finding that has to go on. And I'll show you, you know, where that landing gear controller is. That landing gear controller is actually right back up here behind my finger. You can't see it because it's dark, but it's behind my finger on this panel here. And this is the wiring harness for it. Everything is labeled nice and pretty, and that makes it a lot easier. But the point of that is to say, because the airplanes are built by some chaps in a garage or a hangar or wherever, and they may have deviated from the drawing, it can make every experimental aircraft be a little unique than the one next to it. 
and it can make working on them or servicing them a little difficult if you're not familiar with it. So you end up finding yourself as a mechanic doing a condition inspection, you end up finding yourself doing quite a lot of familiarizing with the aircraft before you even start the condition inspection and looking at a lot of the drawings and things for it, trying to determine how it was built and where things were done and in what manner things were done so that you can adequately service it without it being dangerous. Don't get me wrong, I love this Velocity. It's a very nice airplane, it's very fast. The owner of the aircraft uses it to go back and forth across Texas for his business. I'm gonna spin this way so you can see my ugly face. Um, so, you know, it works really well for him, but for me as the mechanic, it has been a learning curve with this Velocity. And I'll be honest with you, this is the only one I've ever worked on. They're not super common. They are out there. They're not like a Vans RV where there's a lot of RVs out there and you can familiarize yourself with RVs pretty quickly and be pretty good at working on them. This is kind of more specialty. It's not the rarest of experimental air aircraft out there, but there is a large learning curve when it comes to working on velocities because it's something new, it's something different, it's not something I'm used to. It'd be like, you know, I grew up with old hot rods and Fords and things, and then all of a sudden you're asked to work on a Lamborghini. I mean, yeah, sure, I could probably figure it out, but that's, you know, it's gonna take some time. There is a learning curve with doing this kind of thing. So. If you buy an experimental aircraft, if you're an owner thinking about buying an experimental aircraft, or if you're a mechanic thinking about working on an experimental aircraft, I advise you two things. One, make sure there are really good records for the aircraft and that all of the build sheets, the drawings, the diagrams, and all that kind of stuff comes with it at the sale and you don't just get a set of logbooks. A set of logbooks is not gonna do you a lot of good to know that somebody modified the airplane in a weird and interesting way to make it do something. And now you're trying to figure that out and reverse engineer it. So make sure you've got good drawings, good logbooks, good records of all that kind of stuff. And before you even start working on the aircraft, uh, take it apart and familiarize yourself with where things are, what's doing what, label what needs to be labeled, take lots of pictures so that you know how it goes back together and all of that kind of stuff. And just understand that you're gonna be dealing with a little bit different animal if you're used to working on certified aircraft. Now, if you built the airplane, if you are the manufacturer of this airplane because you built it, well, then you're gonna know how to service it because it's your airplane, you built it. But if you ever sell it, then the guy who gets it next is gonna have a learning curve and so on and so forth. So. That's enough of me yapping. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm trying to, you know, put out something for Sunday. I will see you guys again on Wednesday for a practical project demonstration. I think I'm going to show rigging a torque tube slash rigging flaps. I've been getting that asked that question by a couple of different people in every comment, like rig a torque tube, rig a torque tube, talk about a torque tube. So I will talk about a torque tube on Wednesday, how to rig flight controls that use them, flaps, that kind of thing. So if that interests you, stick around for that. As always, I ask you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy. Post editorial note, if you're in Texas or Arizona, get yourself a port -a cool They work. <laughs> <laughs>